All right, ATP, the energy molecule, energy storage molecule, temporary energy storage molecule. Our cells are chock full of ATP molecules, like a lot of other molecules, but what is the ATP up to? ATP transfers energy within a cell. It picks it up one place, carries it over someplace else. How does it do that? We'll see in a moment. Right now, let's talk about the structure of ATP and why it's called ATP. Well, an ATP pop molecule has five major parts. We see three phosphates. That's where the TP comes from, triphosphate. What does the A stand for? It stands for something called adenosine. Did you say adenine? No, I said adenosine. The A stands for adenosine, which is a combination of these two words. So let's write that down. <clears throat> adenosine triphosphate and so adenosine again comes from a combination of those two words adenine and ribose triphosphate from the three phosphate groups and so why have I got this little part of the ATP molecule highlighted well because it contains something we've seen very recently I see a phosphate group, a ribose, and an adenine. That's exactly the same as what that we looked at just a very short time ago. Well, a nucleotide, right? A nucleotide of what? DNA or RNA? Hmm. Ribose. Hmm. That's the sugar group for which one? RNA. Now both DNA and RNA, do they both have adenine? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Remember, at the golf course, at the university golf course, the A, at, is adenine, but only RNA has ribose, the RNA nucleotides. Phosphate, ribose, adenine, the exact same thing as one uh, nucleotide of RNA. So this is like an RNA nucleotide with two more phosphates tacked on. It's, uh, it's interesting. That's the connection with what we've just talked about. What's the connection with where we're going? Well, we're about to get into some energy units. And, uh, and so, where's the energy connection? Well, I see something here that looks like radiation. What does that indicate? It indicates that that is an unstable bond. It means it oh, breaks easily. It breaks easily. And something happens when it breaks involving energy. And so, uh, we'll see in a minute, but uh, when it does come off, can we call what's left? Can we call what's left ATP? No, we got a name change. There's only two phosphates left, so we got a D here instead of a T. What, what does that stand for? Adenosine diphosphate. So adenosine triphosphate, three phosphate groups. Adenosine diphosphate with the two phosphate groups. What's going on with energy? Well, uh, as we will. Uh, as we have learned and will continue to learn, there's energy stored in these here now uh, complex molecules. Where is it stored? Well, it's stored in the bonds. Each bond represents stored energy. Anytime a bond is formed, energy is stored. Gee, how do you get that energy back out? Break the bonds. I'm not going to tear up my little model here. but. Uh, energy stored in the bonds, energy released when the bond breaks. And so what's this bond right here, this unstable bond, when it's intact, that represents stored energy. When that bond is, when that phosphate group is taken off, that bond is broken, energy is released. And so, phosphate tacked on, energy stored. Phosphate pulled off, or taken off, energy released. That's how it works. Well, that's, uh, that's the basics. Let's uh, let's uh, shut this one down and uh, recap, it and then see how that works in general in a cell in a in a what's called an energy cycle.